this is Zach Whalen and I'm making a video here to demonstrate a way to deal with something that comes up pretty commonly in uh, trying to make a scratch project and this is I guess mainly for my students but anyone else who's watching this you're of course welcome to. So the question is how do we make it so that when the sprite gets to the right edge of the screen then it looks like we've entered a new room and we do that by changing the background of the sprite uh, sorry the background of the stage so what I've got to set up here is just that I've got a stage and I've got three backgrounds on it that just say room one room two and room three as you can see there and so that'll just help us keep track of it and they're also named background one two and three uh, also to help keep everything straight so um, on the sprite itself I've just started doing some basic movement stuff so when the right arrow key is pressed now he's gonna move X position uh, sorry when the right arrow key is pressed he's gonna change X by 10 and move to the right um, I also want to do a um, the opposite so when he moves to the he gets the left arrow key he's gonna uh, move to the left so um, going to add in this as well change X by 10 moves him right, change x by negative 10, moves him left. Um, I also need to add this test, which is what we're going to use to determine if he's going to be moving left or right. Uh, sorry, when he's, we're going to test to see if he's achieved the right or the left edge of the screen. So um, I'm using the greater than and less than operator here, by the way. So whenever his x position is greater than 200, that's going to trigger the move. And also when it's uh, the x uh, position is less than 200, it's also going to trigger the move on the left side. So, um, I just need to grab his X position over here from the sensing menu, drop it into that, and then give it a value to check for. So, I'll check for negative 200 there. And what we want to happen at that point is that he jumps from whatever side he's on to the next. So, right now he just moves left and right. Okay, that's fine. Um, what I want him to do is actually change position when this test turns true. So, I um, need to say go to X. Um, he's at y8, negative 82 right now, so we'll just let him stay there. Um, but I just need to change the x position, so um, I will simply do that. Go to, when he gets to the positive 200, he's going to jump to the negative 200. And I'm also going to have him moving the, off the other side, so I'm going to do um, the opposite down here. So go to uh, positive 200. So now let's go ahead and test this. He moves there, and yep, he can go that way. Let's see, can he go that way? Yep, so he's gliding in and out of the screen. All right, so he's still staying in room three, though, so all we need to do now is um, have the room change at the appropriate times and the appropriate ways. So what we're going to do is use a broadcast uh, to do that. So he's going to do this thing, and then he's going to broadcast a message. So I'm going to say, call this one right edge, broadcast right edge. And in this case, um, well, if I can move that that way, uh, broadcast left edge. And these are going to be ways that the sp cat sprite is going to communicate with the stage. So on the stage here, I need to have it respond to these things. So whenever the um, right edge is clicked, I want it to jump to the next background. Now I could just go looks and then say go to the next background, um, but that's not always true. I don't necessarily want it to go to the um, to the right background every time. So I want it to know which background I'm on and then jump to the appropriate next background. That'll let me move him left and right. So I just need to check for this. I need to say um, if and then under looks I can grab the, oh, sorry, under operators I need to do an equals check here. I'm checking for the current background value so I can grab this little thing here and check for that background number. Um, so since these backgrounds actually all have numbers right over here, one, two, three, that's what it's going to refer to in this thing here. So background number is one. Um, so what I want to do is say if background number is one, then um, move to background two. If background number is two, move to background number three. So those are here. Just switch to background uh, background two. So it's saying currently, if it's currently one, then move to background two, right? So I can duplicate this just to save myself some time. Um, and just change all these appropriately. Oops, I don't want to mess that. Um, so if it's, oops, it's a little tricky to drag and drop all these. So checking for two there, checking for three there. This is going to make him go in a loop, by the way, which you may not necessarily want, um, because when he goes to three, I'm going to say wrap around back to number one. Now this almost works. It doesn't quite work. Uh, what I discovered is that if you have this happen, he's just going to keep 
sort of cycling infinitely as soon as you hit the right edge. We want this to actually stop once it's done the right done the rotation once. So for each of these rotations, add a stop script at the end of the if loop here, and that should work. Okay, so I'll do the same thing for the left edge, but this I'll show you right now. This should work. One, room two, room three, and so on. So now that I already have this whole block here, I can just duplicate this and reverse it. So the left edge, now if he's in 1, I want him to go to 3. If he's in 2, I want him to go to 1. And if he's in 3, I want him to go to 2. Okay, so now it's just doing that back and forth. So what's the room numbers? Room 1. Oops, I did not do something. Oh, I did not change my broadcast. That's right. Um, and it still didn't change. Left edge, there we go. So now, watch my room, room one, room two, room three, room one. Now, watch me go back to room three, two, one. And we're all set. So that's it. Thanks for watching.